This podcast is brought to you in association with From Sweden with Love, one of the oldest fan sites dedicated to the world of 007. Online since 2004 and also on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Why not check them out today? James Bond, 007.se Nobody does it better. (laughs) <laughs> or as they say in Stockholm these days, Ingen gör det bättre. Every film Every stunt. Every story. Ever heard of Evil Can Evil? Welcome. To the YouTube series. Welcome to 1983. Yes, I know I said that last week, but it's true. We haven't moved on because this year gave us two bonds. Roger Moore in the summer and Sean Connery in Never Say Never Again this week. He's 12 years older and three stone lighter, but he's full of action, as we'll find out in this week's episode. And we're going to start with stuntman Rocky Taylor and Vic Armstrong, who are going to explain to us their involvement in the picture. Getting off with Roger at Octopussy, and the phone went, and it's uh, Vic Armstrong phoning from Bahamas. He was doubling for Sean out on um, Diet and Never, Never Say Never. Yeah. And uh, he said, can you come out to Bahamas? I said, what? He said, I want you to double for Sean. I said, but aren't you doubling? He said, I've done my ankle. I think he broke his leg or twisted his leg or he couldn't run. Right. And there was a scene where he was running through the forest. At the start, that's right. Yeah. helicopter was chasing him and he couldn't do that. So he wanted to know if I could go. So I said, well, it'd be my pleasure. Bang, I'm on a plane to the Bahamas. I'm now in the Bahamas for three or four, five, six weeks. Right. Doubling for Sean Connery, which, quite a feat, I'm the only stuntman in the world to double for two bombs in one year. There are. See, in that very I've, same... I've now got a Guinness record for as well. That'll, that'll never happen again, either. Never happen again, as far as I'm concerned. Sure. No. But uh, then I get killed three times in the opening sequences. Yeah, it's a fascinating. Three. Let's let's look at that, because so you're doubling for Sean as he arrives at the place where they're doing this exercise. Now, the and first time you get killed... You're coming down the ladder, is that right? Yes, coming down the ladder and he strangles me. Okay. And then there's a bit in there where we have a fight scene. Which That's I right. Do a bit of fighting. In the room with get, Sean, yeah. Then, then Sean comes in and we have a punch up and I hit him with a bit of stick and he throws a punch at me. Then we go into another room where Wendy is in there and she stabs Sean with a knife. Yeah. Yes. That's right. So, okay. So you're... you're um, you're strangled on the ladder, then inside the room when he throws that grenade shot. in. I get shot. You I get, get shot, shot as, a, as one of the guards. And, and, and then, then you're yeah. fighting. <laughs> so I'll get, I'll get killed three times in the same scene. Marvelous. Different people. Two neat CGI when you've got you. You were just, you, you're practically on your own in that picture, weren't you? It was you and I just know. a few other folk. Never Say Never Again, Dave Tomlin, the first assistant director, who's a fantastic assistant director. You know, I did a lot of sh- shows with him, Superman and uh, Bridge Too Far. And yep. he did one of the greatest, the greatest assist, first assistant director in the world. He did Gandhi, you know, and his call sheet is legendary on Gal- at Gandhi, where mm. it has 250,000 people having had, dressed and having had, on set at 7.30. Having For had real? means having had breakfast. And he did that with two assistants. <laughs> you know, he's just yeah. incredible AD. And he 
was involved, a friend of Sean's, he got involved with the movie and it, you know, it was a very troublesome movie in its whole production state, but uh, he was almost a producer on it. And he said, look, we're going to get Vic uh, on it and he'll double Sean and coordinate and everything else. And then I just went along. It was, you know, we were part of a team really. We mm. worked together and uh, so Dave really was the one that got me on that show. Yeah, I, I did all his doubling apart from the motorcycle riding. Mike Runyon did that. He was an absolutely incredible motorcyclist. And he he doubled him on the bike. I could never have done anything like that. He was just phenomenal. But no, I doubled uh, him on everything else, to jump off the castle and everything else with the course and uh, and then in the submarine pens and all that stuff. Yeah, that's that was his, his only double, yeah. During the, the movie when we're in, in, uh, in France, I was doubling Sean with Wendy on the back of my horse galloping before we yes. had to jump off the castle. And I had to go between two horses and knock them over. And one of the horse's shoulders hit my stirrup and turned my foot around, dislocated my ankle. Right. And, you know, I, I couldn't walk or anything. Thank God there was just riding to be done for most of the time. So I was hobbling around the rest of the time. Uh, but then we had to go to the Bahamas. But the hardest part of that whole gag was actually jumping off the building on the rope you have to jump out as far as you can on the end of the rope, and then it pendulums round, and I smash through the windows into right. the roof that Wendy's tied up in. And uh, again, it's something you sort of do the measurements and calculations, but at the end of the day, you have to run and jump. It's amazing. The rope is forever getting shorter as it comes under the, the top of the window into the room. So right. the whiplash on it is amazing. And uh, I just went smashing straight up into the ceiling and back out. <laughs> Billy Horrigan and boys in there trying to catch me, stop me flying back out the window. Wow. That was quite hard. But uh, then, of course, once I'd landed in it, that was in, I jumped off and through the window in the Bahamas and then the interiors all in the studios, fight sequence. And then that's where Wendy says the immortal words, you're dead, Mr. Bond. Not too shabby, sir. The dead 007 dead. So as Vic mentioned, Mike Runyard is the man brought in to double Sean for the bike chase. Let's explore that more, shall we? So the bike chase starts, and it's Mike Runyard who is doubling for Sean Connery. And uh, Fatima Blush is being doubled for majority of this sequence by Frank Henson. Here's a lovely photograph of the two of them together on location, and Frank in the wig and the outfit in the car. Uh, a lot of this is done captured by helmet cam. If you take a look in the wing mirror, uh, there on the right-hand side, you'll see a camera attached to Mike Runyard's helmet. And here's the first major gag. Frank throws that round and then Mike lays the bike down. He has to lay it down. He's gonna leave the bike. There's no way of getting back up again. You'll see now if you look, he's left the bike. But in the sequence, obviously a bit of movie magic, they get Bond to come back up again. But it's a nice little gag to start off with. Now the other major gag, of course, is the car chase. And um, uh, the other two vehicles, these defenders, they, the special effects team put an awful lot of kit on the motorcycle at the front and the back. And uh, Mike, when he does hit the button, he goes up a ramp which is positioned at the back of the car, the Camara, hits it at speed, comes up in the air, and as soon as he lands, the bike falls apart. Look, there's fairing everywhere, bits flying off it. Um, and, uh, well, wrecked, frankly, that's what that is. Uh, this is how they filmed it. Look, there's the uh, camera car position in front. And then the major car gag in the picture. Royal On is driving the car. This is take two. This was the following day. He goes up the pipe and originally, the day before, went to the right, where that lamppost is now, where the motorcycle is just passing. He went there and not over here. It's easily done if you don't straddle the pipe properly, and that's what he'd done correctly this time and straddled it and rolls towards camera into the camera position, which is exactly what was due to happen on camera. In the script, there's bottles everywhere. Um, but um, he was very satisfied with that, I must admit. Although, uh, I say the first time round, he went the other side of that and had to do it again. Quite expensive. But nevertheless, you know, you live and learn uh, and get these uh, get these shots done. But it's a great car turnover. And I must admit, it's a 76 Camara, I think it is. Uh, the, uh, the car pundits out there, they'll be going, no, it's a 75, you know, or a 74. I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a mid to late 70s uh, Camara. And then, of course, the jump from one side of the uh, boatyard to the other. And again, this is ramp to ground. 
and uh, here he goes and fires it from one side to the other. Fantastic, great landing too. Um, but a very good choice. Um, Vic said himself he was able to do a lot of the motorbike stuff, but just not as good as, as Mike Runyard. So why worry? Why waste time when you can give uh, you can give the motorcycle to a man who knows exactly what he's doing? Connery rides his rides a bike very well, and does do a lot of the riding in this sequence. Um, and there he is riding the bike now, quite happily. But uh, it's a nice little. It's a nice little chase sequence. And then, of course, uh, watch out for this. Oh, oh dear. Whoops. And then the helmet comes off and there's the reveal. But it's a, it's a nice job. The other major set piece is the last part of the film uh, in Palmyra in North Africa. And this gives us a chance to examine some of the action as Bond and Domino try to escape. There's is my old mate, stuntman Roy Alon, who plays the guard. And uh, always managed to get himself an acting role. He quite like this tash as well that he's wearing, his stunt moustache. Uh, so Roy comes in and checks. Ah, the bars have gone. So he's got to come up here and then, ooh, 70 feet into an airbag. There we go. The splash was put on afterwards. And that's um, Vic hanging on the side there. Now, Bond, Connery, has to escape here. Here's somebody at the door. Oop, change of direction. And in comes Mark Boyle. Mark Boyle we last saw in The Spy Who Loved Me, driving the Taurus that was chasing the Lotus, and he gets knocked out there. And now Bond has to go and get himself a horse. And this is Edward Garcia on the horse. Hey, down he goes. This is Vic. Gets on board. And then that's Connery there. And Vic's an extraordinary double. He really is. This is all Vic. All in long shot here. Look, that's Wendy. Gets on top. And look, I mean, it's just fantastic. Really, really very, very good. At a glance, you wouldn't tell. You really couldn't tell at all. Um, and now they ride back towards where the action is. Losing the headscarf. And you get a better look as he comes past. Looks terrific, look. Very, very impressive. Very good double indeed. So riding away, Billy Horrigan steps up now and is going to get himself wet. And this is 30 feet into... It's tricky to tell, but as far as Vic was concerned, it was about seven or eight feet of water. He's got to go flat. We've had this conversation before. But he's got to go flat and he's not quite flat enough. So when he hits the water, his knees are still bent and his legs are still pointing up. And he goes down far enough to be able to hit the bottom, causing himself a considerable amount of bruising and some internal bleeding as well. And he was in a great deal of pain after that. Um, he did heal over a period of time. Now, here's the jump. So we've got um, Wendy and Vic. Look, Wendy's feet are in the stirrups. Vic's feet are not in the stirrups. She's got to get herself out of the back of that saddle. And then it's... Um, Vic and Tracy Eden for the actual horse jump. Now, the horse has been trained over a, uh, over a period of months, testing the horse from various different heights. This horse is called Toupe and is an experienced horse in water and for falling. These gags are no longer performed. They don't do them anymore. Uh, but at this particular time, this was the best horse that they had. They've got to try and stay clear. This is the tip tank that was used. You see there at the top, that tank tips and down they come the camera is mounted inside that tank to get the image that you see and they fall into the water the horse of course absolutely no problem with the horse at all um, the humane society were on location obviously they have to be on a production like this and uh, they see everything that goes on they're fully aware uh, that the horse is in fine fine fettle and there is no issues whatsoever and the horse uh, swam away that wasn't a separate shot um, the horse swam away and was trained to swim away and walk because this particular area where they're doing this filming, uh, there's a walkway to one side and the horse is trained to hit the water and then swim over and walk out. Um, and it's a very, very impressive shot, I must admit. Got a lot of flack, but um, all done perfectly safely. Nobody injured. Great gag. I uh, just wanted to sh show you the, 
the credits here at the bottom, obviously, Roy Alon, Dickie Beer, Mark Boyle, Edward Garcia, Frank Henson, Billy Horrigan, Wendy Leach. They're the only... I've got Mark, Mike Runyard and and, uh, and Vic Armstrong, obviously. Uh, I mean, they're the, the major credits that are on the picture. There's uh, Rocky, of course, we've discussed already. He's been killed a couple of times. Firstly, on the steps in the title sequence. Then he has that fight with, uh, with Sean Connery. Um, also, a couple of other mentions we should look at. There's Billy Horrigan who gets killed, well, punched the first time, bang, like that, and then gets killed a second time with a blow dart on the roof, and down he comes, and again inside the room. So he shows up a number of times. Wendy Leach, of course, uh, stabs Bond. This is Tip tipping at the bottom and Terry Forrestal at the top of the stairs. Tip goes down, then Terry goes down. Uh, Andy Bradford, who made an appearance, of course, he gets uh, killed. Grenade. Explosion, and Terry Forrestal gets set on fire and rolls down the bank. Um, Jim Dowdle here. Jim Dowdle, open fire, look, he gets killed on the right-hand side of shot. Felix Leiter comes round. Guess who? Jim Dowdle. They're shooting at each other in this picture. I mean, it's not a very big stunt crew, but there's no mention of, of the uh, the Spanish uh, riders. There's no mention of Val Mazzetti, who's in there as well. There's no mention of Tracy Edden either. It's a small team, but they've managed to create so much action that it uh, it looks like it was created with a huge stunt team, but it's very well done. So if you've enjoyed today's show, and let's be honest, why wouldn't you? Then subscribe. The buttons are down here. Click the subscribe button and enter a world of excitement simply at the touch of a button. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.